A rocket launches from the ocean as SpaceX's $7 million oil rigs sit unused. China completed their 8th sea launch, 11 satellites from platforms positioning anywhere on Earth. No debris risks, no limits. SpaceX bought rigs in 2020, then quit. China, launching cheaper than Falcon 9, building ocean spaceports. Sea launch offers real advantages land can't match. Why did SpaceX walk away while China dominates this capability? Let's dive right in. To understand why this matters, we need to rewind to where China's space program actually started and why they had no choice but to do things differently. For over 50 years, China launched every rocket from deep inland. Zhuquan, Taiwan, Xichang, three massive sites hidden in remote mountains, built during the Cold War's third front campaign of the 1960s and 70s. The logic was simple. Keep critical infrastructure far from coastlines where U.S. and Soviet forces operated, security over efficiency. But this created a problem nobody could ignore. Those rockets had to come down somewhere. And somewhere meant the mountainous regions east of Xichang, dotted with small villages. For decades, these communities lived under falling rocket debris. Worse, many early Chinese rockets burned hypergolic propellants, toxic chemicals that ignite on contact. When a booster stage crashed, it wasn't just metal. It was a chemical hazard. This wasn't sustainable. China needed a different approach. And by 2016, they found it. The Wenchang Space Launch Site opened on Hainan Island that year, and it solved multiple problems at once. First, location. Launching closer to the equator gives rockets a natural velocity boost from Earth's rotation, boosting payload capacity significantly. Second, access. China's new heavy-lift rockets for their space station and lunar missions are too large to transport by train. Ships became the only option, which meant they needed a coastal facility. Wenchang made China's current space ambitions possible. Without it, no space station, no Mars missions, no heavy lift capability. But even Wenchang has constraints. It's in one fixed location. It can only launch at certain orbital inclinations. And with China's launch schedule intensifying, even this modern facility faces capacity limits. That's when China asked a question most space agencies never seriously considered. What if the launch pad itself could move? June 5, 2019, a Long March 11 rocket ignited on a barge in the Yellow Sea, China's first sea launch. The China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology called it experimental. But the data tells a different story. Eight successful sea launches since then, including the recent Smart Dragon 3 mission that deployed 11 satellites simultaneously. This isn't a test program anymore. It's operational infrastructure. The advantages become clear when you examine the mechanics. A mobile platform in international waters can position anywhere. Need an equatorial orbit for maximum Earth rotation boost? Sail to the equator. Payload capacity increases by up to 15% compared to higher latitude sites. Need a polar orbit? Reposition accordingly. Every orbital inclination becomes accessible with the same platform. But China didn't just build boats. They built an entire ecosystem. The Eastern Aerospace Port in Haiyang represents something unprecedented, a vertically integrated space hub operating under their one port, four centers model. Rocket R&D, satellite manufacturing, sea platform development, and data processing all happen in one facility. A rocket can be assembled, tested, integrated with its payload, and rolled directly onto the launch vessel without leaving the complex. Consider the efficiency gains. No transcontinental transport, no coordination across multiple facilities, hundreds of kilometers apart. The entire launch sequence happens within a single integrated system. The platforms themselves are retrofitted civilian vessels. The Defu 15002, the semi-submersible Tairui, the D Ship 3. These conversions cost a fraction of purpose-built infrastructure while providing the core capability needed. The rockets are equally pragmatic. Solid fuel designs like the Smart Dragon 3 and Long March 11 can be prepped quickly and stored for extended periods. The Smart Dragon 3 delivers 1.5 tons to a 500 kilometer sun synchronous orbit, ideal for the small satellite constellations driving current launch demand. What makes this significant is the pace of adoption. 
In September 2023, Galactic Energy became the first private Chinese company to execute a sea launch. Four months later, Orion Space launched the Gravity One, currently China's most powerful solid fuel commercial rocket, from a ship at sea. When both state programs and private startups embrace the same capability this rapidly, it signals something beyond experimentation. It's infrastructure being built in real time. This brings us to the question everyone's asking. Why isn't SpaceX doing this? In 2020, they bought two semi-submersible oil platforms, Phobos and Deimos, for $3.5 million each. These weren't derelict structures. They were engineered in 2005 for $500 $15 million a piece, designed to survive Category 5 hurricanes with 73 by 78 meter main decks floating on submerged pontoons. Dynamic positioning systems using computer controlled water jets could hold them stable in rough seas. Perfect for Starship operations, seemingly. SpaceX began modifications. Phobos was partially cleared by mid 2021. Work started on Deimos in March of 2022. Plans included propellant tank farms, heavy lift equipment, possibly even a mechazilla style catch tower for offshore operations. Then in early 2022, they stopped. Both rigs were sold. Company president Gwyn Shotwell explained that Starship was still developing and they needed to focus all resources on achieving reliable flight operations first. Adding sea platform complexity made no sense at that stage. That explanation holds up for 2022. But Starship is now flying regularly. They've demonstrated booster catches. They're ramping up launch cadence. Yet there's no indication they're revisiting sea launch capability. Shotwell left the door open, noting they might pursue it once Starship reaches operational maturity. But China didn't wait for perfect maturity. They started with smaller solid fuel rockets and scaled up incrementally, building expertise while the infrastructure developed. Here's where the picture gets complicated. Some Chinese sea launches are priced competitively with SpaceX's reusable Falcon 9. That seems impossible given the additional costs. You need multiple vessels, one for launch and one for command and control. You need stable communications, crew accommodations, regular maintenance in corrosive saltwater environments. Operating costs should be higher, not comparable. Two explanations exist. Either Chinese companies have achieved operational efficiencies Western analysis hasn't captured, or substantial government subsidies are keeping prices artificially low while building capability and market share. The subsidy explanation seems more plausible, but even if current pricing isn't commercially sustainable without government support, the infrastructure being built is real. The platforms exist. The rockets work. The Eastern Aerospace Port operates at full capacity. Whether individual launches are profitable today, matters less than the fact that China has established a working, repeatable sea launch system, and they're using it consistently. The strategic value becomes clear when you map it to China's specific challenges. Safety first. No more toxic boosters threatening villages. All debris falls into empty ocean, far from any population. For communities that lived under falling rocket stages for decades, this isn't a minor improvement. It's transformative. Capacity second. China's four land-based sites are operating near maximum schedule density. Sea platforms add launch capability without the years-long process of building new fixed facilities and the geographic limitations that come with them. Resilience. Third. A natural disaster or conflict that disables a land-based site doesn't ground the entire program. Mobile platforms can continue critical missions and they're inherently harder to target than fixed infrastructure. Flexibility fourth. Companies like G-Space building massive low-Earth orbit constellations need frequent launches optimized for specific inclinations. Sea launch provides mission-by-mission -mission optimization that fixed sites simply cannot match. But there's a broader strategic element here. China's launch infrastructure evolved from secretive mountain installations to modern coastal facilities to mobile ocean platforms. Each step expanded capability while reducing vulnerabilities. They're building a launch ecosystem that's geographically distributed, operationally flexible, and increasingly difficult to disrupt through any single point of failure.
Sea launch comes with real drawbacks. Initial investment is substantial. Converting ships is more complex and expensive than building concrete launch pads. Weather creates more delays. Salt water corrodes everything, driving up maintenance costs. Coordination between multiple vessels while maintaining stable communications with the rocket adds operational complexity. These aren't trivial obstacles. They're why most countries stick with land-based sites despite sea launch being technically feasible for decades. The Soviet Union's sea launch venture operated commercially from 1999 to 2014 before going bankrupt, even with proven technology and international partnerships. So how is China making it work? Government backing provides runway that commercial ventures lack. But there's also the integration advantage. The Eastern Aerospace Port eliminates many logistical challenges that plagued earlier attempts by consolidating the entire operation. And starting with smaller solid-fuel rockets, rather than attempting large liquid-fueled launches, kept initial complexity manageable while building institutional knowledge. China continues expanding. New platforms are under construction. The Haiyang facility is growing. Both state-owned enterprises and private companies are investing in sea launch technology. Meanwhile, SpaceX's platforms are gone. NASA never seriously pursued maritime launch. Russia's sea launch program ended. European space agencies haven't shown interest. This creates an unusual situation. China is building expertise in a domain where they face no competition. Every launch refines their processes. Every successful mission proves reliability to potential customers. Every new platform adds capacity. Is sea launch more cost-effective than well-optimized land operations? Probably not. But for a nation with constrained coastal geography, crowded airspace, and aggressive constellation deployment timelines, the flexibility and resilience may justify the premium. And there's something Western space agencies should note. China isn't just doing this. They're getting demonstrably better at it. Eight successful missions across multiple rocket types, both government and commercial operators, a dedicated port with full vertical integration, multiple platforms in service. This isn't experimental anymore. It's infrastructure. And right now, China is the only country building it. Here's the reality. China operates a sea launch capability SpaceX abandoned. Eight successful launches, multiple platforms, a dedicated spaceport, government and commercial operators. Meanwhile, SpaceX's $7 million rigs sold off. Is sea launch the future? Maybe not. Land-based reusability might win on economics. But while the West debates, China gains experience in a domain with zero competition. The strategic truth, China has launch flexibility no other nation currently possesses. Mobile platforms positioning anywhere. No geographic limits. No populated area debris risks. And they're scaling up. Your take, is this a game-changing capability the West underestimated? Or will full reusability make it obsolete? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If this gave you real insight, hit that like button, subscribe to Space Hub, and turn on notifications for our next breakdown. We cover the moves that matter, not just headlines. Thanks for watching. See you next time.